Let's learn about turning point. So if we have a curve here, we are interested to find where do they turns. And as we know, when they turns, just like your car, when you're going to do a U-turn, at one particular point, your car is going to be completely flat, or we can say that completely horizontal. And as we know, when the car is horizontal, we can say that the gradient is zero because horizontal line have the gradient of zero. So we, we, we can say that when we want to find the turning point, we just need to know that at this particular curve, which point have the gradient that is zero. So let's try to find whether 2, 1 is the point where the gradient is zero. So let's try to find the data here. If you want to find the gradient at 2, we find two points so close to each other, basically it means the gradient at that particular point 2. So we plug in the value here, and bam, indeed, our assumption just now is correct. Whenever we have a turning point, it's slightly like a car, it becomes horizontal, and basically the gradient is 0. So in another word, we can say that the dy over dx is 0, because a flat line have the gradient is 0. So let's try to find out by using mathematical way. So the first step is, find the gradient functions. Why? Because we want to prove that at one particular point, the gradient is 0. So take the derivative of these functions, we have 2x minus 4, just by 2 go to the front, 2x, 1 go to the front, minus 4. Since we want to find the turning point, then we know the turning point we have the gradient of 0. That's why we have dy over dx is 0, find the x value. So once we found our x value, we can say that this is going to be our turning point. But since we say it's a point, must be in the coordinate form. This is only the x coordinate. How about we want to find the y coordinate? Just substitute our x value back into the equations to find our y. So we have 2 here. So 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. And we're supposed to have 1. So we can say that the coordinate must be 2, 1 as our turning point. For a quadratic curve, we have either a minimum point or a maximum point. So remember, we have two kinds of turning point. Either it's a minimum point or a maximum point. And we're going to find out that how can we prove that this particular point is a minimum and this particular point is a maximum. So let us try to do it step by step. So again, the first step is just to find the gradient functions because why? We want to prove that turning point have the gradient of 0. So once we have the gradient function for both of the curve, we want to say that to find the turning point, the gradient must be 0. So for this one, as just now, we know it's x equal to 2. Meanwhile, for this one, the x coordinate is going to be negative 2. In order to find the coordinate, substitute our x back into the equations, to find the y value. So this one is 2, 1. This one is negative 2. 9 is the turning point. So we come to conclusion that these two are the turning point for these two curve. But how do we prove that it's a minimum or maximum? We have the one of the way which is by using table. So this table is going to be picking three x value. How do we pick the x value? This is the turning point. We put in the middle, and we're going to choose one of the points that is slightly left to our point. Let's say it's 1.99. And another point, which is slightly to the right-hand side of our turning point. Let's say it's 2.01. For this one, negative 2 must be in the middle, which is the turning point. Slightly to the left, which is smaller, so negative 2.01. And slightly to the right means it's slightly larger. Let's say I negative 1.99. So why is it with this way? It's because I want to find out that what happened to the gradient is slightly to the left of our turning point. So as we know, turning point have a slab, have a horizontal line, which is the gradient is zero. If the left hand side is something that is negative, so a negative gradient is going down, and the right hand side is a positive gradient, which is going up, can you see that? If we combine everything, this looks like a minimum point. 
Meanwhile, if now we find out that left hand side of the turning point have the gradient is positive, and right hand side of the turning point have a gradient of negative, which is going down, can you see? This looks like a maximum point. This is why you want to prove that the sign is changing from the left to the right of a turning point. So now, how to find the sign? Just by plugging in the value into our gradient functions. So 2, 1.99 minus 4. So we're supposed to have a negative value. Meanwhile, we plug in the 2.01, we're supposed to have a positive value. We are not interested in the value, but instead just the sign. So we can say that this is a negative, this is 0, this is a plus, this is a plus, 0, and negative. And we know if we have a negative gradient, it's supposed to be going down. Zero gradient means there's no gradient. Flat lined. Positive means going up. Positive means going up. Zero means flat. And negative means going down. So if we combine all the lines, we have something like this, right? So this one looks like a minimum point. Meanwhile, this one looks like a maximum point. So this is how we prove the minimum or maximum point. But of course, this is only one of the way. But we also know that we can find it the maximum or minimum point by using the second derivative. So what do we mean by second derivative is, we're going to differentiate one more time again. So uh, we differentiate one more time is d2y over dx2. This is what we pronounce as a second derivative d2y over dx2 is equivalent to, we take the derivative of this one for one more time. So 2x power of 1, go down, become 2. Meanwhile, for this one, when we take the derivative of this one, it becomes negative 2. So after we have this value, what do they tell us? They say that if this is a positive, they are showing us is the minimum value. Meanwhile, if we have a negative value, it means that the turning point is indeed is a maximum turning point. So why is it this? Because d2y over dx2 basically tells us about the concavity. Concavity means that either they are concave like this, or they concave this way. So this one, this way we will say that the concavity is the positive. Meanwhile, something like this, we say that they have the concavity of negative. So this is why when we have positive, it means minimum, because the concave positive is like this. When concave negative, the concavity is negative, it's something like this. So this is why we say that by using d2y over dx2, we can find either it's a minimum or maximum. And inside the graph, it looks like this. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.